we came to Catalina Island with the Mount Madonna 10th graders uh, as they have completed their ninth grade year of marine biology and their 10th grade oceanography. So we come to the USC Wrigley Center where we get to spend five days living in the dorms and participating with the scientists that are working here. It's really a place that's been untouched by human contact in a lot of ways. Like a lot of this island is uninhabited and the um, cove is on a MPA, so a marine protected area. It's really fun. We're doing a lot of cool activities and spending a lot of time in the water and being here on a real science facility, like watching other people and other scientists do their actual research and just being on an, an, on an island, having just being surrounded by the water, learning about the ocean while swimming in the ocean. It's a pretty amazing opportunity. Not something that you read about in a book or that you you know, watch on TV or something like that is unique to be able to really be in this, immerse them in the environment where that kind of uh, experience is taking place. The Garibaldi is really cool to see just because they're such a bright fish. Just going diving down and kind of being with the fish is so cool. We saw lots of Garibaldi, some opal fish. Um, we actually saw some bat rays and some uh, tiger sharks. It was pretty cool. What I want to do is go over different phyla and when we go to the intertidal zone there are several different phyla that you're going to see. You can dunk it in the water, just uh, keep it over the water and just pass it along, okay? It won't hurt you, put your hands out flat. There you go. Oh species and algaes in the touch tank that one day. It's like the, the sea urchin and the sea hare. <laughs> um, that was just like, it was fun to touch them and hold them. <laughs> We're gonna walk down a little bit. We also do want to keep in mind that we don't disturb the area because we are humans and we are going to be impacting this area. Okay, try to stick as much bare rock as you can. Um, and look where your feet are going, okay? Yeah. So yesterday we went tide pooling to uh, kind of take a survey of the intertidal zones and see how the populations are progressing. So we spent a couple of days learning how to identify those different types of animals. And then yesterday we went down to the tide pools and we actually charted like how many of each species there were and they're going to use that data to enter into a database and then researchers have access to that if they want to look at the populations. For many of them, the, the first time they've been exposed to a higher level of expectations in the scientific community where they really have to step up and contribute at the academic level that they're really all capable of, but that when you're in a classroom environment perhaps doesn't seem quite as uh, critical. First, we went kayaking all the way around to this really cool tunnel, went through it, 
and went all the way out to Bird Rock, saw a bunch of sea lions and some harbor seals, which are apparently really rare here. So today we experimented with the ROVs and how they function and we built our own models. It was interesting because I saw a lot of different structures and everyone was doing totally crazy different things. None, none of them looked like the other and that was just really interesting to see because they all worked at the end. They also supplied us with uh, real ROVs and those were a lot easier to drive and a lot more interesting because you could go deeper and you can, they had a camera where you could see all the fish and you just got to explore. This year I incorporated a research project that they got to pick that was very open-ended. It just, the only criteria was that it had to do something with the ocean. I think the class presentations were, they were nerve-wracking, of course, um, but I think, honestly, for me, it opened up a door of confidence kind of thing because it just, like, helped me, like, I've never presented outside of a classroom, you know? So it was interesting being in a in a in some place that was meant to be a lecture hall kind of thing, and it was just a whole new perspective. Okay, so how ocean acidification works. So this is just some of the basic chemistry about it. Uh, there is obviously way more factors. These are not just the only chemicals in the ocean. This is like your basic, the most simple explanation of ocean acidification. I really like learned that on this trip because I never really understood why the ocean animals were so important, but now I do, so. I feel like I learned the most on Lorraine's presentation when she talked about like each native fish and it's just like how interesting the ocean is and how crazy of a world it is down there. You actually get like a first-hand experience when you come here and study about all the fish because you're actually living it, not just reading it through it. Yeah, we're burning like the sun. I think the hardest things were uh, just the non-stop of it all. You know, we went from a lot of times one activity to the next, to the next. Uh, I just think that we were able to put a lot in our brains and just kind of internalize it, and now I get to come out with a lot of cool knowledge about it all. As small classes, we get the opportunity to come over here and take what they've learned for the last two years and apply it as citizen scientists and build the ROVs, work in the labs, snorkel and collect data. Um, and these learning journeys all build upon each other to give the students that greater perspective, to give them that world view. We get to go outside of what we know. Uh, we get to experience something totally different that we haven't seen before. The colors are blinding, we move in the light, colliding with space and time. Feel so good, we draw tears, let them wash through our fears. I feel so, feel so, feel so. There's the explicit, the, the actual science and engineering work we do with the ROVs, the animal identification, the time in the water, the learning specific skills, how to use lab equipment, that kind of thing. Those are, that's more the explicit, and then there's also the how do we travel together. How do we put up with each other for a week? How do we navigate expectations in a professional environment? 
How do I uh, set aside my own personal needs for the needs of the group? Which all helps build as our learning journeys grow from starting in third grade at Mount Madonna all the way through seniors. And each year, the expectations slightly increase so that the students are really prepared to take full advantage of the different opportunities they're offered.